Hi everyone, Tara Johnson here for episode two of Dandelion Devotionals. And I've been thinking a lot about spiritual warfare and our enemy, Satan. And you know, he is a liar and the father of lies. And there's something interesting that happens in our walk with God. You know, Satan lies to us all the time. He's the accuser of the brethren. And not only does he go before God, like he did in the book of Job, and accuse us, but often he comes to us and accuses God. And a lie is only harmful to us if we believe it. He will tell us all kinds of lies. He will tell us that we're worthless. He will tell us that um, the things that God has set in order don't really apply to us. He will tell us we can sin and go against God's ordinances and it won't hurt us. He will tell us all kinds of things, but they are ultimately lies. Like I said, a lie is only harmful if we believe it. Not long ago, I caught my six-year-old son doing something he shouldn't have. He had put something um, down the toilet and uh, I caught him and he said, oh, that wasn't me that did that. I'm pretty sure that was Hulk. Really? Well, if I really believe that, I would be a neurotic mess, wandering around the house thinking that the Hulk was lurking around trying to destroy things. Obviously, I didn't believe that lie, so it didn't bother me. I have a friend who was told all of her life that she was unwanted. The problem with that was that she believed it. Now, obviously, she is wanted. She's greatly loved by God treasured by him and by so many of her friends. But because she believed that lie as a child, it affected every aspect of her life. So you see what I mean when I say a lie is only harmful if we believe it. And that very first lie began way back, right after the creation of the world. Okay, so we're going to go today to Genesis chapter 3. All right. Now the serpent was more crafty than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent, Satan, said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? You see what he did there? He just questioned God's God's word. He said, Did he really say that? Are you sure? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, except the tree Except fruit from the tree, which is in the middle of the garden. God said, you shall not eat from it, nor touch it, otherwise you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. Now there, he flat out just contradicted God. And Eve proved that she already knew what God had said. She knew it. Satan just turned around and flat out contradicted him then. For God knows that on the day you eat it from it, your eyes will be opened. That is, you will have greater awareness, and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was delightful to look at, and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful, she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of the two of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they fastened fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Okay, so isn't it interesting here what happened? Satan told them, have truths. He told them, he said, well, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened, which they were. But he did not tell them the shame that would accompany that awareness, did he? Now, one other thing here that's important to note is the process that Eve went through, okay? So she saw that the tree was good for food. This is in verse 6, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And that it was delightful to look at. And it was a tree to be desired in order to make one wise. And she took some of its fruit and ate it. Okay, now over, if you skip over to the book of 1 John, 1 John gives us, John gives us the recipe for disaster here. We really get into trouble when we begin to dwell on those lies, on doing what we know we're not supposed to, okay? First, we hear a lie, we dwell on it, and begin to believe it. And then that's when we act on it. There's dangerous ground in there, especially in the dwelling. And that's what Eve did. She dwelled on that lie. 
And there's a three prong process, I think, where, sna where Satan entraps us. Okay, so in the book of 1 John, let's see, 1 John 1 16, for all that is in the world, the lust and craving of the flesh, so that was one, the lust and longing of the eyes, that's two, and the boastful pride of life, these do not come from the Father, but from the world. Okay, so she hit all three. It looked good. That was the eyes, right? It, it, it fed something in, in her flesh. She knew it would probably taste good, right? And the pride of life. She believed it would make her like God. That's dangerous territory. So when we're faced with temptation, we really need to think about, okay, is, is it because it's, it looks good to me? Is it because it's going to satisfy some type of craving in me? Or is this doing something to my pride, my ego? Is it filling a hole inside of me that can only be filled by Jesus Christ? We have to be careful in that territory. So many times we just act before we think, but we really need to stop and take time and analyze. Why am I really doing this? Now, there's something else important to note here. And I think it's really worth mentioning. Satan never once told Eve, hey, why don't you taste the fruit? Hey, taste it. I bet it looks really good. He never did that, did he? Think about it. All that he did, go back here. All that he did was say, can it really be that God has said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? He never once tempted her to eat fruit. She did that on her own. It's easy for us to blame the enemy and say, he tempted me to do this. If I was only raised differently, if, I, if culture was different, this could have been different for me. We do make our own decisions, and it's so easy for us to pass the buck and blame other people. But ultimately, we have to take responsibility for our own choices. Satan never once suggested that she should eat it. She leapt to that conclusion on her own once she had dwelt on questioning God's authority. Once we question God's word in our lives, it leaves the door open for all kinds of disaster to happen afterwards. And she can't really blame the culture either because Adam and Eve were in paradise and they still messed up. So it's easy for us to say, oh, if the world was different or if my family was different, those things don't help, do they? But ultimately, we do have to make the decision ourselves. But isn't it sweet? Look on. Did God was walking in the garden, it says, in the cool of the day. And Adam and Eve were hiding from the presence of the Lord. That means from his face. And the Lord God called to Adam and said, where are you? Now, God, obviously, he knew where they were. He, he's God. He knows everything. But he was giving a chance. He was seeking them out and giving them a chance to respond. Adam said, I heard the sound of you walking in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Notice Adam didn't say, I hid because I was afraid that you were going to be angry. He was just ashamed of himself. Bad decisions lead to shame, don't they? But God was so good to them. He was so kind. He had to discipline them for what they had done, but he made them close and covered their shame and took care of them and gave them uh, a new life and new boundaries to protect them. God loves you, even when you mess up, even when you make mistakes. And uh, we don't have to fall for the enemy's schemes. You don't have to believe the lie.